In this screencast, I'm going to recap the basics of the area and volume elements in the different coordinate systems. Uh, I did think it was worth emphasizing some, some key points one more time. Well, I want to start with polar coordinates because this is the easiest and clearest one to see and it has the, the essence of what's going on really. So in polar coordinates, it's a two-dimensional coordinate system and we have a little uh, area here shown in blue and we derive the element of area is given by r dr d theta the way you should think about this, so let me just pick some, I'm just going to do it all in white, that, that this direction here corresponds to the radial direction, and this is dr, some small change dr, and if you make a change dr, you'll, you'll affect the area proportional to, to dr, and it doesn't matter what radius you are, it doesn't matter what distance you are from, from, the, from the center here, any, any variation in dr will give you the same uh, proportional increase in the area. That'll be clear in a minute actually if I draw another wedge at a different r. Whereas this, this distance, I'm thinking of it kind of as a linear distance, this is r d theta, where this angle here is d theta, and this does depend on r. Again, let me just go ahead and extend this out here. It should be obvious, but uh, let's do it. Let's go way out here. And again, I imagine this is, even though I've drawn it way out here and I'm going to have to draw it somewhat large, I imagine that it's, uh, in fact, very small. So, so this, for the same dr, the effect on this area, the effect on, that if I, the, the same dr will give me the same contribution to the area here as it is here. However, the same d, d, d theta that I consider will give me a bigger contribution to the area out here uh, than it did in close simply because r is larger. So and again as I, as I emphasized here this r goes with the, the d theta even though we always write it as r dr d theta that r can be came about from this. And let me just say so every time every time you have an angular coordinate the, the contribution to a length is going to be determined by the the change in that angular coordinate times a distance from the from the, the center or the axis at which that angle is, is swinging. Okay, that will be the truth, the case for all the coordinate systems. For cylindrical coordinates, I don't think I really need to discuss it very much. It's just um, polar coordinates together with, with um, Z coordinate as a Cartesian coordinate. So I would just go ahead and draw on here what the dr is a radial change there. dz is a height change. Anytime you make a dz change or a dr change, you will make the same contribution to this volume no matter where you are in space. However, for the same reasons as uh, in polar coordinates, this distance, the amount that you contribute to the volume here, will be given by r d theta, where that is, that there is d theta. Okay, so it's really just the same as polar. And I don't think I want to discuss it any further, although I will draw my little. So the hard one, of course, is spherical, and I'm not going to, I didn't attempt to draw a little spherical element. I'm going to instead rely on, um, pictures and in fact I really want to focus on this this globe because I think it's that's really what you should study and think about all the, the, the key aspects are contained on this globe yeah I guess what I first want to consider is what happens when you vary uh, Phi so these if you vary again variation in Phi uh, I think I, I can't remember what colors I drew before but okay this direction here corresponds to an increase in Phi and so let's just think of this let's just look focus on this element here and, and, and think about that this distance that I'm now drawing here that corresponds to a to a delta phi so let's call this a delta phi now that length is not delta phi but it corresponds to a delta phi in fact that the angular change here let me just try and say this clearly the angular change between here and there is uh, I believe 15 degrees if you just count these up along here you'll see that's 15 degrees then depending on the radius of the of the sphere this the length of this piece will be given by the radius of the sphere times d phi and you can see that, since this sphere has a constant radius, you can see that all the delta phi's, they're all 15 degrees here, and might as well the projection effects, you can see that they all correspond to the same, to the same distance. Okay, this and that, and that all correspond to the same distance on the globe. Now that's different for the, uh, for the thetas. This direction here corresponds to a change in theta. And we want to know what that length is. So we have a given, we have given, we have a delta theta, and that length, as we, as we discussed, that's r sine phi d theta. And you're really just going to have to to think about it and work it, work your own, get your own understanding of this. Again, you can't see the r dependence here because r is fixed everywhere in this globe. But you can clearly see that this, that for a given, that um, for a given d theta, 
um, the length of this is going to depend where you are on the globe. If you go up here to the North Pole, these, this is going to be a very small change. Clearly, this, this length does depend on phi. And just to go over to here, this is a picture taken uh, off a Wikipedia web page. You can find many, just Google it, um, find one of your own liking, go through and understand um, understand this and understand that the volume in spherical coordinates is given by this. Yeah, the way you should think about it is that one of these R's, one of them goes with that, and the other one, together with the sine, goes with the d theta. All right? Even though we write the R squared sine phi in front, uh, that's, that's where they come from. So then just finally, again, if you have any trouble, I think you need to, uh, again, just understand this picture and understand how um, the relationships between these various angles. And the one final thing I want to leave with uh, about, I should have mentioned it before with spherical coordinates, but I will mention it here. And again, if you go to Wikipedia or other places, you may very quickly see this, is that the notation for spherical coordinates is not universal. Um, different notations are sometimes used for the radial coordinate. In particular, sometimes rho is used for the radial coordinate. That probably won't cause you too much confusion, but the thing that is potentially quite confusing is that there are two different conventions, and that sometimes this angle here would be called theta, and this angle be called phi, and um, vice versa. And I will not use that notation, hopefully, but you should just be aware that different sources will use different conventions for these two angles. All right, so I hope that helps.